Please be seated. Wow. Pretty much a sellout, huh? Thank you. And we gather to thank this wonderful man who in so many ways blessed so many within this community. We thank you for his love, his energy, his compassion, his uh, boundless eagerness, his grin, all of the wonderful ways that he has blessed us. We gather to commend Fred into God's eternal care, but also to help ourselves to heal in a wonderful and special way. We welcome all of those who are joining us via live stream. Um, thank you for being here, and we know that you are equally blessed as well. I guess to put it in the context of a Twins game, this might be uh, considered a home game, a home opener, but it's broadcasted, right? Okay, yeah. And I want to uh, thank the Fox family for making it kind of look like a baseball game. Uh, how many, anybody over there have a Killebrew shirt at all? Or how about Mudcat Grant? I'm, I'm going back to some of the areas where this man would have, uh, would have felt the most comfortable. He was an avid Twins fan as well, obviously. And uh, yes, we gather in a wonderful, in a very special way. You'll need two things to get through this memorial service and tribute to Fred to give glory to our God. First will be the bulletin. I hope you all have that. And then the second thing will be that red cranberry hymnal, which is there in the, uh, in the, in the pew. Our opening hymn is hymn number 731, hymn number 731, Earth and All Stars, one of Fred's favorite hymns by Herb Brokering. And if memory serves, I think Herb Brokering, a wonderful theologian and churchman in the Lutheran Church, I think he's from South Dakota as well. So yeah, so maybe there's a connection there too in a wonderful and serendipitous kind of way. Please rise as we continue with our worship. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered here to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother, Fred Anthony Fox, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. Amen. Earth and All Stars, hymn number 731.
please join me turning to the bulletin service order as is printed there in the bulletin. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who are sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Fred. We thank you for giving him for us to know and love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There's a saying, those who are uh, born and raised out on the farm, out in the country, where you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. And uh, for those who have been blessed with that kind of an ethic, they always take with them, regardless of how long it has been since they've been taken from the farm and the prairie and all of the wonderful attributes of life out there, that they carry that with them. Fred lived many years out in Oregon, away from his birth home in South Dakota, but yet I think he carried that beautiful image of the sunrises and the sunsets, the wheat which grew, the animals which were, which were raised. He carried that with him wherever he went. And perhaps the most wonderful and beautiful picture scripturally and metaphor, and Fred knew this one as well, it would be one that would put a tear to his eye, would, that would be the 23rd Psalm. And so it is that we read that responsibly, you have the bold parts. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they come. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. We continue with the reading of the scripture, and we've invited family members to come forward to do that. Just speak in a nice conversational tone. The first reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. A reading from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers 
and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I, ha and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prof prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we see, then we will see face to face. Now I only know in part, then I will know fully, even, if I, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. A reading from Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first, first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. The word of the Lord. Third reading is from John chapter 6, verses 35 through 40. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The holy gospel that comes to us this morning is recorded in the gospel of St. John, chapter 14, beginning with the first verse. Hear these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled, says Jesus. Believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. You, Christ. Please be seated. We continue now with the...
brothers and sisters in Christ, family and friends of Fred Anthony Fox, Phyllis, David, Patricia, Robert, and Scott. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It is an understatement to say that he was a good man. Yes, he was a good man. But what made him such a good man was not his virtue that he bestowed, of which he had plenty, but of the love with which he shared with so many. As was so eloquently read but just a few moments ago, and now faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Fred was a good man, but he could become, by his own admission, a grumpy old man, <laughs> outdoing both Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau in the movie that bears the same name. And as the present garb here this morning demonstrates, Fred was a glutton for punishment, as he was reminded at Romeo's every Tuesday. For he was, after all, a Twins fan. Yes, a Twins fan. We tried to figure out if we could somehow have a scorecard for this worship service, and it didn't seem to pan out or work. So what we did instead is we've got a crossword puzzle, which you're more than free to do. It's downstairs as a part of the lunch a little bit later on. And I think, I, I, am I correct in also saying that there's also with that a coupon which you can use at L&M, which allows you to talk to any of the workers there for over a half hour. <laughs> yes. Fred was an avid Twins fan, and the Twins often let him down, but Fred Fox never let us down. Fred was a faithful and devoted husband, and an excellent and loving father and grandfather. Fred was not blessed with siblings, but for all of us who knew him, he was a trusted brother and friend. And for those who worked with Fred, they knew him as a hard-working and competent colleague, a mining engineer who exercised his profession not only through math and physics, but through a smile and a grin that pierced to the human heart. As an alumni of the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology, Fred was equally proud of the belt buckle he wore around his waist as the degree that hung on the wall. But the most prized possession that Fred took with him from South Dakota was not his education, but his bride, with whom he would be wed for nearly 64 years. Phyllis, Fred could not have asked for a better helpmate than you. You served him not only as his wife, but as his best friend. The only thing stronger than Fred Fox's hands was the bond of love that the two of you shared. A bond of love that has been passed from the two of you to your family and to this community. Phyllis, you and Fred have been the recipient of many greeting cards from the church celebrating your anniversary on April 2nd. So let me repeat these words of promise, Phyllis, that I know that you have heard before, and I quote, God's richest blessings to the two of you as you celebrate 63 years of matrimony. As your union has brought many blessings to others, may you in return be blessed by the love others have to share with you. And may the legacy of that love, commitment, fidelity, and forgiveness that you have shared these many years strengthen your family and community, and yes, this church which you love so well as our Savior's Lutheran. And to you, David, Patricia, Robert, and Scott, 
with every memory that you have of your father. May it help in the healing of your grief. May your tears always be equal to your joy. May the smiles outweigh the tears as you gather for every holiday meal. Tie each fishing lure, grip each bowling ball, or write on each twin scorecard. Fred Fox measured the success of each day, not only by the chores that were accomplished in the backyard, but by the conversations that took place at the hardware store. I'll let Robert and the children say more about that. Fred was the neighbor who not only loaned you the tool you needed for each job, but he would come to help you finish each job to its completion. I can personally testify to this as Fred helped Sandy and me move into our home when we came up here to Hibbing. In order to get the furniture in our family room in the lower level basement, we had to pull back the carpeting and remove the wooden landing at the bottom of the stairs in order, it was very tight, in order to squeeze an oversized sofa and two recliner chairs into the, into the family room. It was a thankless job, one in which you were covered with sweat and dirt and dust before it was done. And Fred loved every minute of it. Eric Philman our church custodian at the time. He is a very strong man, and he was about half Fred's age, and he was lifting and pulling and heaving each piece of furniture which was brought tight around the corner of the bottom of the stairs into the awaiting room, and Fred was right there alongside of him. And Phyllis, if you were there, you have, would have been saying, Fred, watch your back. And how many of us in this sanctuary this morning have a similar story of Fred Anthony Fox. Fred was the embodiment of old man strong, getting his strength not from the gym, but from years of turning wrenches and woodworking tools. Never buy new was Fred's motto. Always repair it. Whether it be a fishing pole, the car, the truck, the lawnmower, the snowmobile, the snowblower, I'm told, I have this on good authority, that the Fox family snowblower is as old as Robert. <laughs> and yes, Fred, that snowblower better start tomorrow because we're supposed to get 10 to 15 inches of snow. We're going to hold you to that, Fred. But as blessed as we were with what came from Fred's hands, let us also thank him for what came forth from his heart. Fred was no stranger to this church sanctuary. He was here most every Sunday. Fred was here most every Sunday listening to the promises that are awaiting us in heaven and singing the replies that are heard by the angels who wait for us there. Fred was here most every Sunday in this sanctuary, sitting in about the third or the fourth pew right next to that pillar on the south side of the church, his head turned and cocked his hand up around his ear, <laughs> straining to hear every word. There was never a hearing aid that worked for Fred Fox. He strained to hear every preached word, every message from the children's message, every spoken liturgy, every sung hymn. Fred doesn't have to hold his hand up to his ear anymore. He is now a part of the promise he strained so hard to hear. A promise made clear through the metaphor of planted wheat 
as like in a growing field on the Dakota prairie. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Listen, says the Apostle Paul, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised and perishable, and we will be changed. Then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ who gives us the victory through our Lord. There is yet one more great gift that Fred gave to us that we need to discuss. And that is the gift of tears. Fred was a man who was not afraid of a showing tearful emotions. Tearful emotions combined both joy and sorrow at the same time. Many of us remember years ago when General Norman Schwarzkopf was giving a press conference on the success of the first Gulf War. And he was up there and in all of his general regalia, pontificating and talking and, and with a great sense of optimism and courage. And then he began to choke up and tear up when he addressed the number of light but significant casualties that occurred on the battlefield. Remember that? When asked about that later in an interview with Barbara Walters, Schwarzkopf asserted, I don't think I would like a man who was incapable enough of enough emotion to get tears in his eyes every now and then. A man without tears scares me. He's not a human being. Leaders cry. Yes, generals cry. And I don't know what it is about our upbringing, particularly a lot of us males, but for some reason we are only allowed one emotion, and that is anger. Tears and three wonderful words, I love you, need to be wed into who we are. And Fred was a great role model in many respects in that regard. For there are many things in this world worth crying about. Some of right here. Often Fred would tear up when the choir sang in the balcony. And when the little children sang at the Christmas program. Fred teared up with each birthday, wedding, graduation, anniversary, and with each act of generos generosity that he either gave or received. With tears in his eyes, he told me this more than once, with tears in his eyes, Fred reminded me of Scott's baptism, where he told me that he was overjoyed that Pastor Daigolo allowed the baptism to be a part of the worship service a practice which we still do to this day. And Fred would, and yes, Fred would cry at each baptism. But of all of the tears that welled up in Fred Fox's eyes, I would like to close by talking to you about the last time that Fred took Holy Communion in the hospital. Fred received the sacrament for the forgiveness of his sins, life, and eternal salvation, as he had hundreds, if not thousands, of times before. Fred and Phyllis heard the promised blessing that as often, as often as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Go in peace, Fred. The Lord is indeed with you. Amen. Amen. Every single Sunday since 1964, it was 1964 that you moved here, right? Yes, Fred Fox heard that from this altar. And now 
He was on the cusp of being able to live it. And once again, with tears in his eyes, Fred some, said something very revealing. In between the breaths that he took and the oxygen on the mask, Fred said, with respect to the prospect of his own impending death, this should be interesting. <laughs> yeah. This should be interesting. And I swear to you, ladies and gentlemen, in 35 years of parish ministry, I have heard other people say the same thing or something very similar to it. This should be interesting. And it has always been said, this should be interesting. It has always been said by disciples of Jesus Christ who kept plenty busy doing the Lord's work to do while it is day until no one can work because of the darkness. This should be interesting. For you see, and I think we know this, but we have a hard time realizing this, as deeply as we have read the scriptures, or as many times as we've sung the hymns, or how many times we have come to worship, we really don't know what heaven will look like. But with tears of joy in our eyes, we look forward with great interest. As Fred has testified before us, this should be interesting. What more is there left to be said, dear friends? After everybody has been helped, after every white elephant sail has been worked at, after every dish after a funeral has been washed, after every Bible study has been participated in, after every neighbor has been helped, after all of the ways that we've reached and out in God's love and compassion and mercy and forgiveness and to receive equally in return, what else can we say? But this should be interesting. I think that was Fred's way of saying what is captured in the contemporary worship song by the group Mercy Me. Huh? Truthfully, Fred was not all that much into contemporary Christian music, but in this case, we can make an exception. Hmm? I can only imagine, right? I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes would see when your face is before me. I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I, will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes, and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Today, Fred Anthony Fox, today our tears join with yours. And make no mistake about it, Fred, they are great tears of joy. Not only for what we have shared, but for what is yet to come. But there will come a time, Fred, and we take hold of this from Scripture. There will come a time when we will join you and hear a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be them, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying will be no more. 
for the first things have passed away. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for the loving memory of Fred Anthony Fox. As we commend him into your care, give us the courage to follow his example. We know that you have led the way, restoring, comforting, caring, forgiving all of your people. Fred knew it all too well. Bless us, O Lord, as we follow in the train of those who've gone before us. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Please rise for prayer and intercession. If you would, please turn with me in the bullet as we continue with the service. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus, fullness of compassion, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Fred and dry the tears of those who weep. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, man of sorrows, you wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us who mourn. In your mercy, Jesus, firstborn of the new creation, you raise the dead. Give to our brother life eternal. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, friend of sinners, you promised paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Fred to the joys of heaven. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, wellspring of life, you washed our brother in baptism and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Give him communion with all your saints. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bright morning star, comfort us in our sorrows at the death of Fred. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. And we invite Robert to come forward, please. There's no crying in baseball, but this isn't baseball, so I'm not going to make any guarantees. When I decided to speak today, I asked uh, Pastor Kevin for some guidance. 
said, how do I sum up my father in the time I have? He said, I'll put no limitations on you, but a good rule of thumb is one minute for every year of life. <laughs> I hope you're all comfortable. The fact is I won't be able to sum up my father today. I'm just going to share a few thoughts and memories that have come up over the past few days. Frugal, not wasteful, not spending freely or unnecessarily. Thrifty. In extreme cases, it is known as Fred Fox. <laughs> my dad was frugal. I thought my dad's frugality was founded in necessity. Raising four children on a single income had to be a challenge. My mom, credit to her, was at home raising four, four kids. That's no small feat either. Later in life, I realized that my father's frugality was not completely rooted in necessity. It's just the way he was. He would rather fix something than buy new. He would rather make something of better quality than he could buy. He was not afraid to try anything. Scott reminded me that that pertained to food too. How do you know if you don't like, how do you know you don't like something if you haven't tried it? it would, that was also a common remark when we were kids. Roofing, construction, welding, sewing, upholstery, woodwork, auto repair, appliance repair. He fabricated a butcher knife and, he, and hunting knives, one of a kind hunting knives for David and I over broke, uh, out of broken saw blades that were gonna be thrown away. He constructed, he deconstructed a pair of his own pants to make a pattern so that he could make me a pair of wool hunting pants like the ones he had because you just can't, they just don't make things like they used to. <laughs> he put an addition on our home and then built custom cabinets for it. Later on, a neighbor liked his work and asked, they asked him to do the same. He didn't know how to do any of this stuff, he just figured it out. It must have been in his DNA because he passed it down to his sons. In the words of my sister-in-law, Carrie, those fox men can fix anything. <laughs> At my father's retirement party, the, employ the employees of the office presented my dad with the office coffee maker. They said that now that he was retired, they could buy a new one. <laughs> As Kevin mentioned, my dad's snowblower is almost as old as I am. His lawnmower is, and he was very, <laughs> was very proud of the fact that it is still running on the original spark plug. <laughs> my father loved fishing, hunting, the twins, and sports of all kinds. He could be gruff and grumpy, but he was also a softy, and he was not afraid to show it. He would often tear up around us either with pride or sentimentality. Now a couple of stories that have come up. My father would say he was going to take a quick trip to the grocery store or to L&M. This was a lie. <laughs> there was no such thing as a quick trip to any public place with my father. He would invariably bump into somebody that he knew and a conversation would ensue. Once while traveling to our deer hunting camp outside of Cloquet, my father had realized that we had forgotten bologna, which was a lunchtime staple. To fix the situation, we made a side trip into Cloquet to the grocery store. We waited outside in the truck for probably 40 minutes. <laughs> and we were just wondering, we're in Cloquet. How, could, how long could it take for one package of bologna? Well, the, he finally came out, and uh, the story was always the same. Oh, I bumped into so-and-so. We're in cloquet. Like, <laughs> seriously. Another time, he had run a, we had to run an errand down to his office near Bennett Park. And uh, again, we had to make a quick trip, quick stop at a pharmacy in downtown. And I waited in the truck for him. 
This time it was probably only 20 minutes, but he had to pick up one thing. When he returned to the truck, I asked, I suppose you bumped into somebody you know? His reply was, well, I know him now. <laughs> He struck up a conversation with a complete stranger and found out that this person had grown up in the very near where my father did in Portland. And then he laid this gem on me. Robert, always be friendly. You never know who you're going to meet. Amen, Dad. My family has given me permission to tell this next story, but Pastor Kevin has not. <laughs> I'll ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> My father displayed his bravery in 1984 when four of my friends and I wanted to go down to the Minnesota State High School hockey tournament. He volunteered to chaperone us. I suspect he just wanted to keep an eye on me. Five high school seniors, my dad, one car, one hotel room. One evening after the games, we had all settled down and the lights were out. From the other side of the room, someone released a small fart. <laughs> this started a giggle fest that lasted several minutes and we, we finally settled down. It happened again. <laughs> the cycle repeated itself three or four times. Wanting to get to sleep, my father said, had had enough of this, and he decided to put an end to it. From his backside, he let loose with a thunderous report <laughs> and exclaimed, if you can't beat that, keep it to yourself and shut up. <laughs> It was at that moment among my high school friends that my father became a legend. <laughs> my friends remind me of that story at every reunion and uh, just the other day I found that uh, Carrie's mom heard the story from one of those gentlemen that were in that room that night. Last, last story happened to be the other day in the hospital and will stay with me forever. I had left the hospital room for a moment, and when I came back to the room, my dad opened his eyes to see who it was, and I said, it's just me, Dad. He didn't have a lot of strength, but in a stern tone that he got from his grandma Nellie, Nelly, he replied, don't say just. Don't ever say just when referring to you. You are very special, all of you are very special to me, and he rattled us off by name. Thank you for coming. As a tribute to my father, I'd like to ask you to take a moment out of your day today and recall a memory of your own that makes you smile or laugh. My dad would like that. That's how he would like to be remembered. Lastly, I'll leave you with my father's favorite quote. Don't throw that away. I can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Please rise. Fred Anthony Fox, age 86, longtime resident of Hibbing, died peacefully Sunday, March 17th, 2024, at the Fairview Range Medical Center in Hibbing, surrounded by his family. He was born May 15th, 1937, in Brookings, South Dakota, the son of David and Irene Jensen Fox. Fred graduated from high school in Portland, Oregon, went on to receive his BS in mining engineering from the South Dakota State of Mines and Technology in Rapid City, South Dakota.
Fred was united in marriage to Phyllis C. Gibson on April 2nd, 1960 in Spearfish, South Dakota. A veteran of the United States Army, Fred was stationed at Fort Lewis, Washington. Fred worked as a mining engineer for the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources for over 35 years. He was an active member of Our Savior's Lutheran Church, where he worked on the White Elephant Sale, Property Committee, Church Council, the Ludafisk Dinner, and served as a lector and teller. He enjoyed hunting, fishing, woodworking, gardening, bowling, and playing softball. He was a handyman who would fix nearly everything. Fred is survived by his wife of nearly 64 years, Phyllis, children David Fox of Hibbing, Minnesota, Patricia and Mike Bernard of International Falls, Minnesota, Robert and Terry Fox of Stillwater, Minnesota, and Scott and Carrie Fox of Hibbing, Minnesota, grandchildren Brett and Madeline Fox, and numerous friends. Fred was preceded in death by his parents and his grandmother Nellie, who was an instrumental in Fred's upbringing and his foundation in the faith. May God richly bless the memory of Fred Anthony Fox. Amen. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Fred Anthony Fox. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the Blessed grace of everlasting peace of the saints in light. Amen. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and to the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. We close with our recessional hymn, hymn number 824. Hymn number 824, This Is My Father's World. We will, the immediate family will immediately depart making just a very quick jaunt over to the columbarium, which is in the back of the chapel, Pilgrim's Chapel. After inurnment, then we will make ourselves down to the fellowship hall where we will be greeted by those who have prepared the fellowship lunch. And of course, there will be porchetta. <clears throat>